Before we get started modeling, the first thing we want to do is set up Blender 2.79 uh, with the correct viewport configuration, uh, add in the tools that we're going to need, save any settings that we're going to find useful as we uh, start our object creation. So what you see here is the default view in Blender 2.79. Uh, we, by the way, I understand that, that 2.80 is in beta now. It looks really promising. They've made a lot of big changes to the UI. And I think it's going to be a fantastic tool for scenery creation. But at the moment, it's still in beta, um, so it's still a bit unstable. Uh, it's, it, it lacks the support for the exporting tools that we're going to use uh, for flight sims. And uh, it's just generally not quite ready for prime time yet. So everything I show in this initial set of videos is going to be in 2.79. So before we get started, uh, the first thing we need to do is get rid of these uh, default objects. It comes by default with a cube, a camera, and a light. We're going to just select each of those and get rid of them. Try to clean off our workspace here. Most of this is not really necessary if you do modeling for scenery. Um, the other thing is that the animation timeline window is open at the bottom here. Now there are times when we're going to do animations for scenery, but most of the time, the vast majority of the time, is going to be spent making static models. So uh, what I like to do is just go down to the lower left of the 3D window here, if you can follow my cursor, grab the little handle and just drag down to collapse that window so that we have a full screen 3D viewport. That having been done, the only other thing we need to configure here in the viewport is to go over to the World tab, which is the little planet-looking thingy. And down at the bottom, under the Gather panel, there is a Samples box. It's set to 5 by default. Now this is, uh, it's grayed out right now, but that means nothing. You can still set a value in it. We're going to bump that up to 25 and hit Enter. All that really means is by default, if we do a texture bake, um, we do a lot of like ambient occlusion baking for our models and whatnot. Um, this, this, if I found that setting the samples to 25 is a good compromise between speed and quality. Uh, so you, it can, it can render an AO bake very quickly, like within a minute or two, um, and the quality is is definitely good enough for for flight sims. Um, anything lower than that in the 15, 10 to 15 range starts to get a little chunky and noisy. Um, and anything above 25 starts taking more time. So I set to 25 there. All right, so we have the viewport set. We have the, the uh, sample set. I'm going to uh, go up here under the file menu and click Save Startup File. And then click OK to the little box that comes up. And what that means is now, every time you start Blender, it's going to come up with this configuration rather than what it came up with by default. Um, so that's useful. It's a time saver. Um, you'll find that you open Blender an awful lot to start new projects. And uh, this way you don't have to reconfigure anything. So the next thing we need to do after that is enable some of the included add-ons that are very useful for what we're going to do but uh, which, although they ship with Blender, are not enabled by default. So under the File menu up here, we want to go to our User Preferences. And uh, there are three in particular that I find very useful. So let's go to the Add-ons tab. And uh, in the search box here, I'm just going to type in, let's start with Loop Tools. So type in Loop. See the Mesh Loop Tools. We're just going to click the checkbox by that. Uh, and then we want to enable um, the Boolean tools or Bool tools. So B O L should bring that up. Click checkbox by Bool tool. And then lastly, we want to enable the extra mesh objects that we can uh, use with our Control A menu to uh, add them into a scene. So let's just type in extra. Um, and under Add Mesh Extra Objects, Click that. And if you want, I haven't used this much, but uh, it might be useful to click the Add Curve Extra Objects as well. So now that we've made all these selections, we just go down to the bottom to Save User Settings. Click that. And now every time you start Blender, those will all be active as well.
The final bit of setup we need to do is to set up our, our uh, X-Plane and our FSX P3D exporters for Blender. So uh, let's do the uh, FSX P3D version first. We're going to go over to uh, fsdeveloper.com. Uh, I've included the links to both of these, by the way, both in the video here and in the notes. Um, for, for this one, we're going to go to the Blender to FSX P3D thread. You have to, it's in the very first post, but down near the bottom. And click the link um, to download the add-on. Put someplace where you'll be able to find it. And then uh, we'll do the same thing for the X-Plane to Blender add-on, which is uh, actually kind of a misnomer. It's Blender, it's, uh, Blender to X-Plane. Uh, there is not a stable importer that will let you bring uh, X-Plane OBJs over into Blender. So let's see. We go to the Clone or Download button here. Click Download Zip. Do the same thing. Save it someplace where you can find it. And then go back over into Blender under file user preferences we're going to click install add-on from file locate the add-ons that we just downloaded do them one at a time find the add-on click install add-on from file I've already got them in so I'm not going through it here um, and then when both of them are in first click on just the testing tab here under supported level and you'll see the three entries for the FSX P3D toolset there is the FSX toolset which you check the uh, FSX P3D materials, which you check, and the import export DirectX format for FSX P3D. Check all three of those. Hit save user settings. And then we'll go back under, we'll click official and community. Have to shift click on those and choose X Plane. And there's the import export X Plane entry. Same thing. Select that and save user settings. And now you'll have several things in the interface that show you you've installed it properly. Uh, on the, on the left-hand side here under the T menu, uh, you'll have a new tab for Blender to FSX P3D. Um, that uh, We'll go into how to use these once we get started exporting. But as, if you see all these entries, then you've got that set up correctly. And then over here under the Layers menu, you should have an X-Plane tab now. Um, that has a uh, quite a few explain options and you'll see some options for materials uh, both FSX P3D materials and uh, explain materials when you've got an object created and you're in the materials tab Anyway, that's essentially what we need to do to get started So if you've gotten your default scene set up your workspace set up you've enabled your uh, default tools that are not switched on by default and you've installed and configured your uh, importer exporter modules, then you're ready to dive into modeling.